I think it did. <laughs> oh, well, we'll start recording down from here. So again, slope, y-intercept, slope is rise over run. And so we have two different cases, up and to the right, down and to the left, positive slope, down and to the right, or up and to the left for a negative slope, okay? So we're gonna use these bits of information to graph this, okay? Now, in order for you to figure out how to move, your slope has to be in fraction form because it's rise over run, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn the invisible into visible, okay? <laughs> I'm missing that other number, which we discussed is a hidden zero, right? But I do have my slope here. My slope here is what? One over four. One over four. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, for that for that zero. Mm-hmm. How did how, you just made it zero? But how do we know it's not a, 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 a subtraction? How do you know? It doesn't matter if it is plus or so minus. This do? says plus. Oh, okay. So that's why. I, okay, so you're you're doing based on that. That, that, because of this formula, because of that formula right I there. put plus. Okay, but so if that but formula, zero is neutral. So if I would have put zero, plus zero, minus zero, it still would have been the same still spot. still would be the same spot. Yeah. All right, cool, All right. It will matter if it's not zero, though, right? The yes, plus and the minus right, will the make a difference. Yes, it'll make a difference. Okay. 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 So right now I have a positive number, don't I? Yes, ma'am. So that means for this positive number, I have two different movements I could do. I could do up and to the right, yeah. or I can do down and to the left. Yeah. Okay. But I have to start here. That's another thing I want to mention. This is just my own thing on how I remember. But I remember B as in begin. That's where I'm going to start. And then M, I move. So you have to begin with the B, and then you can move according to your slope. Okay? So if I draw my graph paper here, and I have little lines, but I'm not landing on my little lines. Let's see if I can make that actually land on my dots. I'm horrible at drawing. <laughs> it's still not landing on my little dots. It's okay. I have a ruler somewhere. Should probably use it. Okay. So since this number here is where I begin, I'm going to begin at zero. Remember, that's the y intercept. So it's going to tell me where to begin on the y axis. And I have to begin at zero. Well, this is zero on the y axis, right? Mm -hmm. Now I got to move according to the slope to get the point. So I'm going to go up one and then over Four. Uh -huh. one, two, three, four. So that means I'm going to have a dot right here. I went up one and then over four. I'll put some little markers on here because I can't see anything. Probably shouldn't put it there. If I look at how I'm drawing my little markers, the markers go there. So up one and over four should actually have been right here. Okay? But I can also do the reverse, right? I can do this motion as well. Mm -hmm. So starting from my beginning again, I can go down one and then backward four. Yep. And I end up here. And what's supposed to happen is because it's the graph of a line, it should all line up, right? Normally I have a ruler. I might have to go grab it. But I can use like a card. And if we use a GB card. <laughs> so these should line up. Now if you're not using graph paper, they may not line up. Just because you're putting your little markers wherever, right? But if you are using graph paper, they should, for the most part, line up. Now an arrow goes, I mean an arrow, a line goes forever in both directions. It doesn't just stop right there, okay? Because I can keep going up and over four, up and over four, as much as I want to, okay? And the same thing here, I could keep going downward and over, downward and over, downward and over, as many times as I wanted to. And I would still land on that line, okay? Okay, so that's where it's if I have a positive and if I have no y-intercept. Now, what's going on over here for this one? Do I have a y-intercept over here? No, if I want to put one there, make the invisible visible, what is it? Zero. Zero. 
So I have to put plus zero, which just means I'm gonna begin at that origin again, okay? We will get to some problems where there is a number there, right? And we'll have to do a little bit different. So let's try to make this line again. So again, I'm gonna begin at zero, but remember for the slope, it needs to be a fraction. How do I write two as a fraction? Two over one. Yeah, two, two over one, but it is negative, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so that means I can go up two and I can go over one. Nope, that's not what I can do, right? That's not going to give me a negative. Both positive, yeah. <laughs> yes, so yeah. down two and over one, that'll be negative, positive, which is negative. Yeah. Or I can go up two, but then I would have to do what when the bottom? Go down? Not down, left or right? Oh, I mean left. I mean left. left. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's only run. You yeah, can't yes, run up and down, right? Well, <laughs> there is an expression you run up and down, but, <laughs> but you don't technically run up and down. You just run in this motion, right? All right. Left or right? So then let's go from our beginning here, and we're gonna do both of those motions to get two more points. Okay. So from there, I'm gonna go down two units, and then I'm gonna go to the right one unit. So I land right here. Then for the other motion, start at the beginning again, and go up two units, left one, yep. And then notice they should line up, right? If you're not using graph paper, they might not line up perfectly. I just make my dots bigger when I really do that <laughs> so that it'll grasp it. And then notice, is it going downward from left to right? Yes. It is, right? And it should because it had a negative, negative slope, slope to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Okay? So we've done those two problems. That's all there is to it. Oh my goodness, this little earring Ooh. keeps dropping. Okay. Let's see... So you said some problems the way you have that that formula written out it will mm -hmm. have it will have a number in it. Uh -huh. that mx plus b will have a number in there. Yep. Look at the next problem. Okay. Example five now. Okay. So yes, the next one is exactly that. It wants me to graph. I didn't write the directions, that was a but that was a negative four x on here. Yes, okay. negative four x plus three. So I don't have anything invisible. I have everything I need, right? I have the number in front of x, and I have the number over here on the side. And I'm actually gonna do another one because I want you to see. What else can happen? Because notice how the formula has a plus, right? Yep. And then look at what's here. Negative. Okay. Mm hmm So let's do this one first. Let me draw my line real quick. Okay, so there's my little graph paper. And now where am I going to begin? It tells you you're going to begin at positive three. Mm -hmm. Now remember, this is the y-intercept. So it's the y-value that's positive three. So where would that be located then? Up at the top. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. One, two, three. three. Yeah. So this is where I need to begin. And then my slope has to be in fraction form, right? So you can put it over one, like we said before, to make it a fraction. So then from here, what directions can I move? Uh, for the negative, you can, it's got to be a negative, so you could move over. Do up or down first, and then the do the rise, the up or down, and then do the run, the left or right. So I can go in which way, up or down first? 
Just pick one, it doesn't matter. You can go down. Okay, so if I go down, then what direction do I have to run? Well, it can still be a negative. Uh huh. To the left. If that I go, if I go to the left, that's a negative and a negative, okay, which yeah. make what? Okay, that's a positive. You're a right. positive. Okay. So I can't run left. Can't run left. Which way do I have to run? To the right. To the right. Okay, so down and to the right. Now the other option is instead of going down, it can go upward, okay. but that's positive. Right. So I have to do the bottom negative, which means go in which direction, left or so right? To the left. To the left. To the left. So okay. To the left. Right. And you'll know if you went in the wrong directions because remember the big scope of things. If your line is going downward from left to right or if your line is going upward from left to right. So if you chose the wrong combos, you'll be able to notice when you're done. Okay? So from there, I'm going to go down one, two, three, four because the four is on top. And then I'm going to run over one. Then up here, I'm going to do it again, but i got to go up four, right? I'm going to need some more little markers. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to go up four, but then I'm going to go backward one. And when you do it to flip the reverse, you're going to always start at the three, correct? Always go back to always the beginning. Go back to your mm -hmm. always back if to you the don't, beginning. if you start here where you left off, it's going to give you a good It's going to take you back to where you started, and then you have to do it again anyway. Oh, okay. All right. So just go back to the home position. Mm -hmm. You're going to end up there anyway. Okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, now if I connect all of these together, hopefully my card is long enough. Is this one going downward as you read it from left to right? Like we start on the left and then you trace it. Does it go downward? It's going, down. it's going downward. Yes. So then we're good. We pick the right motions here. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my next graph. So I'm drawing my little system here. Now here, where am I beginning? This one's a little bit trickier. You're going to nail it at the bottom. You're going to go negative two. You're mm -hmm. going to go down. So you have to go yeah, downward. Down so you have to do negative two. Yes, then this is like two over one. one right. So in what direction can I move from here? You can go up. Up, but to keep it positive, you're going to the right. To the right one. Yes, ma'am. Then start back at the beginning, and if I decide to go down two instead, you got to go to the left. You got to go to the left one. Mm -hmm. And then if you trace that, is it going up from left to right? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Start with the left, draw, trace your finger, and it goes up. So this one's good. So just knowing this is going to help us do a lot of these graphs. There are more different forms, but that one is essentially the biggest one that I use. What number am I on? Example 7. So the only thing different now is they put a fraction there, but we've already been using the fraction. Right? Yeah. We already know how to do it with the fraction. So it's nothing new. It's just its own little topic for some reason. They try to give everything to you in baby bites before they <laughs> give you the whole thing. So let me mark on here. Oh, I'm going to have to go really far low. Okay. How did I know I was going to have to go really low? Because you got a negative six. Mm -hmm, which means I have to start at the bottom, at the right? Bottom, yeah. So that's where I begin. My negative six y value, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then from there, I got to move one third. Now, is this a positive or a negative? A positive. Positive. So if I go up one, which way do I have to go three? To the right. Correct. So I land here. You can go down one and then to your left on three. Uh-huh. And then if I connect these guys, just look at it, trace it from left to right. Is it still positive slope? Yeah, mm -hmm. So not much different. I know that's a separate topic, but you can knock it out because it's just like the other ones. Um, now this is where it gets a little bit weird. 
but I promise you it's exactly the same it just looks different let me get another one just in case are they all like that oh no I'll get another one here let me write down this problem too okay so I just wanted to get a couple of versions so that way we don't just do one and then you don't know how to do the other one okay so it's given to you like this however we only know how to graph them when they look like this right but you've already been shown in one of the previous I think it was day six actually in there they asked you how they showed you how to solve for a variable right even though you had lots of letters in there you had to get one all by itself whichever one they told you right so we're gonna use that technique which letter is by itself over here in this little form that we need which letter is by itself y is all by itself right so then what we want to do is we want to get this y all by itself and if we do it will look like this okay you may have to manipulate it a little bit, but it will look like that. So the first thing I do to get y by itself is get rid of terms that are not attached to it. Like the negative is attached to that y. So that's the last thing I get rid of, okay? What I need to do is move the x over. How do you move terms over? Mm -hmm, use opposite, right? So minus x and minus x. So this is gone, but I still have that negative with the y. Now look at the order I want them in. I want the x's in the front and the regular numbers in the back, right? So this negative x, I can put it in the front, but what kind of 3 is that? A positive, positive or a negative? Three. It's a positive, it's a positive three. 3. So you have to put the little plus 3 now because there's another term, okay? So before the little plus was invisible, right? Because it was just 3 all by itself. Mm -hmm. But now it's not 3 by itself, so you have to show that plus sign. Okay, is y all by itself? Nope. No, so we have to divide by the coefficient. What is the number in front here? It's like invisible. It's a negative it what? One. It's a, a negative one. one. Yeah. So I have to divide everybody by a negative, negative one. one. Right. So then the negatives one cancel. I finally have y all by itself. And what's a negative divided by a negative? Positive. Mm-hmm. And one divided by one? Because the little invisible one there, right? Yeah. Is one. What's positive 3 divided by negative 1? Negative 3. So negative minus 3. three. Mm -hmm. So my B here is going to be negative 3. My M is going to be what? Positive, positive one, 1, which I can write as a fraction. 1 over 1. 1 over 1. So now let me draw my graph paper real quick. Oh gosh, I'm way off. Okay, so I've got some little markers here. I think that's enough markers. Okay, so I am beginning where? Negative three. Uh huh. So that means the y value needs to be negative three. So right here. Then according to this, if I go up one, which way do I have to go to keep it positive? To the, right. to the right one. Then if I choose to go down one, I have to go Shoot what? To, the left. to keep it positive, yes. And notice it goes up, right? Once I connect these. So the graphing part isn't anything new. And this part isn't anything new. It's just putting the two together, okay? So we can solve for variables, and we know how to graph them once they look like that, right? It's just putting the information together. And then remembering all those little invisible ones, right? That stuff, that's important. Okay, let's try another one. Just because this is a little bit different, it's actually easier <laughs> than the last one. How would I get y by itself here? Plus 3x. Mm-hmm, move the 3x over by doing the opposite, right? And then remember what the goal is. Always keep your goal in your mind. Your goal is to make it look like this. So yes, you have y by itself, no negative or anything, but remember you wanna write these in the correct order. 
So put your positive 3x in the front and put your negative 7 in the back, okay? Once you have it like that, you should be able to graph it. So I am going to have to go really low because of that negative 7, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, 129, 130, 131, 132, 133, 134, 135, 136, 137, 138, 139, 140, 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 'Cause that would be positive and positive, right? Yeah. Now, since you move to the right, if you move to the left, that's negative. You need another negative to get positive, right? So you have to move down three. Yeah. One, two, three. And then these should line up. It's okay to move left or right before you move up or down. The only thing you have to remember is that the top number is up or down and the bottom number is left or right. Always, because it's rise over run. So if you choose to work with the bottom first, that's fine, but don't start moving to left and right three, right? Because that's not correct. Three is the rise, the up or down. One is the run, the left or right. Which one was that? That was that one. Okay, so we know how to graph lines that have positive and negative slope, right? If it has a positive slope or if it has a negative slope, it actually makes a diagonal line, doesn't it? Always. They're all been diagonal lines. Well, guess what? You could still have lines that are vertical or horizontal. So we need to know what those equations look like, okay? So I'm going to go over to another page. I don't really need this to tell me what to do, but let's go to my paper. Example on my own. I'm example 10. And you need two different ones. So you need graph something that looks like. Let me graph the one that's relatable first. <laughs> this one is relatable. Mm. This one, we don't know how to do. And so that one's a little bit different. Now, remember the goal for this. It does have y equals, doesn't it? Yeah. So it could still relate to this form there, okay? But the x's are missing, aren't they? Yep. So what I could do is I could write it as y equals 0x positive 3. It still has the positive 3, and now I know why there's no x's, because it says 0x's, right? And you could use the same idea that you were using before. If I write 0 as a fraction, it's 0 over 1, just like everything else, right? So let me draw my graph paper real quick. So then according to this form, now that I have it looking the way it's supposed to look, um, I would have to go up 3. So one, two, three, there's my y-intercept. And then I would have to do rise and run. Rise is the top number, run is the bottom. So up and down is the top, left or right is the bottom. But you're not gonna move up and down. Right, it says do not move up, but I still could go to the right one. Yeah. Do not move up or down, but I still could go to the left one. What kind of line is that now? That's a 
uh, horizontal. Exactly. So just to kind of summarize here, because you're not going to want to do all that every single time you see y equals a number. <laughs> if you see something like this, where there's no x's whatsoever, that will be a horizontal line. At that value for y value. So all I would have to do is mark where that y value is and then draw a horizontal line from there. Okay. Yeah, because you don't have no x. Or like Correct. Oh, okay. 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 It doesn't matter what the x's it's are going to be. The y is always going to be three. three right. Notice here the x is one and the y is three. three. When the x is two, the y is three. Okay. When the x is negative three, the y, y is, is three. three. <laughs> doesn't matter what the no, x is. Like okay. So if you remember this, or you'll have it on your note sheet when I pass them out, um, it'll always be there. Okay. I may go print them out because I don't think I brought them with me. But I can print them out and go run to the printer real quick before y'all leave today. So you can have it with you in case you go in there tonight. Okay, so if y equals a number is a horizontal line, what can you infer about x equal to a number? Remember the topic is graphing horizontal and vertical lines. So if you have x equals a number, you would think that that means it's going to be a vertical line at that x value, whatever that number is. Because just like the other equation, it's the same situation. It doesn't matter what the y value is because there's no y's here. The x value is always going to be whatever it tells you, negative 1. So if I draw my little graph over here. Here is where x is equal to negative 1, right? And I know I'm going to have, according to this information, I'm going to have a vertical line there. Does that make sense? If the y is 1, notice the x is still negative 1. If the y is 3 or 4, whatever that is up there, the, y, the x is still negative 1. If the y happens to be negative 3, the x value is still negative 1. Okay, so it doesn't matter what the y's are now, the x value will always stay negative 1. Another thing I want to point out just here because we're kind of seeing it here, and it will come up later in another topic on its own, but we'll already know the answer. What was the slope up there? M was 0, right? Notice it's a flat line. If you're walking on a road that has a flat surface, that means there's no slope, right? It's zero. Okay. Can you walk on something that's like this? Can you walk on the wall? No. <laughs> you can't do this. We're not Spider-Man, right? We cannot walk on the wall. These guys have an undefined slope. Okay. So here these have a zero slope when it's the horizontal one because those make sense. I can still walk on something that has no incline. But this, you cannot walk on a wall. So it's an undefined slope, okay? And that will come up in another topic. It's just, I don't know if we'll get there today, but it will pop up. Um, okay, they're going to switch it up on me a little bit. So let's see, example 12, find the y-intercept and x-intercept of the line. Now I'm going, let me write the equation down real quick. Notice that this one, they're all the same. All four of these are the same. This one also says find the x and y intercepts. Okay. 
I may want to do one of those actually. So I'm going to change my example a little bit from what it was. So it's the same thing. Then this says graph it given its x and y intercept. Okay. But I don't need to know how to do that. That's like if they already did the work for me for the problem I'm going to do. And then this one is you have to find it first and then you can graph it. Okay, so all four of them we're going to hit by just doing the last one. So we're going to find the y and x intercepts of the line, then graph. One topic, two topics tell me how to find the x and y intercept. One gives me the x and y intercept and asks me to graph it. And then the last one says find the x and y intercepts, then graph. Okay, so we'll get all the information we need with just doing the last of those four topics. Okay, so it says find the y-intercept and the x-intercept of the graph of the line. Now, think about it first. I am going to have to draw eventually, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my little axes here. And mark my numbers. And I may need more or less, I don't know. Now, think about this, y-intercept. In order for me to have a y-intercept, it means I'm a point somewhere on this line, right? Yes, ma'am. What is the x value of any point on this line? What do you mean a value, what, positive or negative? No, what is the x value of the point, no matter where I'm at? Let's pretend I'm right here, right? Negative. Pretend I'm there. Oh, you mean the starting The point? x value. Because there's always an x value and a y value co corresponding to one spot, right? I mean, you can say so that's zero, your origin point. It is. It's oh, okay. zero because okay. I didn't move left or right, but I did go down three, right? Yeah. Notice that the x value is zero. What if the dot was up here? What are the coordinates of that dot? That still should be zero. Zero and then what? Four. Positive four. It doesn't matter where I am on this y-axis. No matter what the y-intercept is, what is the x-coordinate always going to be? Zero. Zero. Okay. So in order for me to find the y-intercept, all I'm going to do is make the x zero and then see what I get. Okay, so I'm going to write that here. Okay. To find y-intercept, make x equals zero and so. So let's do that. We're going to plug in 0 for x into that equation and go figure out what the y is. What is 2 times 0? 0. 0. Minus 3y equals 3. And would it really matter if I add or subtract 0? It's not going to change anything, is it? No. It's still going to be negative 3y equal to 3. to 3. But how do I get y all by itself? You got to add. Nope. Those are multiplied together, right? Oh, my. You got to divide by negative 3. Right. Okay, no problem. Slow down, cool. <laughs> so you're going to have y is what? Negative 1. Yes. And now I know my y-intercept. This is my y-intercept. So I'm going to erase these because they're actually not my answer, right? This is just to make a point. Mm -hmm. So my actually my y-intercept yeah. is there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now let's go see how do we find the x-intercept. How do you think we're gonna do it? What is the y-coordinate of any dot on this line? No matter where I am here, what's the y-value always? The y value is right in the center of the thermometer, right? It's zero. Which is zero. Okay. So in order for me to find the x intercept, I have to make y. the y, y equals zero, zero. Okay. and solve. Okay. So in order to find x, you make the other one disappear pretty much, right? And in order to find the y, you make the other one disappear. Okay. So we go back to the original equation, and now we're going to plug in zero for y.
and that's zero. And if I add zero, it's really not going to change anything. How do I solve for x there? Divide by two. Mm hmm. And then that's going to be your rise or your run, right? No, okay. that's for m. This is not m. This is my x intercept. Oh, you're just going to leave that as a. This is my x intercept. Are you just going to leave it like that? Mm hmm. I can write it as a point. It would be this x value and what y value? What y did I start with? Zero. Zero. Okay. The Zero. same for that one. I could have made that one into a point. The y value is obviously negative one, but what was the x from the beginning? Zero. Okay. Zero. And if I graph this, that means no left or right, right. but down, down one. one. If I go here, that means actually to the right one and a half, but then no up or down. So I'm actually right here in the middle. No, just I mean, FYI. Yeah, yeah I have line. enough. I mean, you can still draw a line it. Right, I could yeah. still just pick, uh, and now like you just pick the button, right? And it draws the line for you. You draw your dots and then you pick a little line and it'll and it draw the line for you. Yeah. However, notice that this is a fraction. You may not be able to grab the little dot and put it in a spot where there's a fraction, especially like if you get one third or something weird. Yeah. There is a button in Alex that looks something like this. It'll have like this and like a little X. Yeah. If you click on that button, it'll open up a little template like this, and you can type in your fraction and then your zero, and it'll put that spot there for you, okay? And then once you have that spot in there and you have the other spot, then you can draw the line, okay? Click on the line, and it'll draw the line. But just FYI, if you ever get weird-looking fractions, or if you're having difficulty, because I'm blind, and sometimes I can't sit there and get the little dot to be on the right spot, I don't even bother trying to move my mouse around. I just click on that, type in my coordinates, and it pops the dots for me. Okay? It helps. Especially when things get weird later. Okay. I think... Um, I might do one more, but that's about it. Because then the rest of them I want to do later. Um, I may have to do two separate videos just because I... The last one I did was like 45 or 50 minutes long, and I hate doing videos that long because nobody's going to sit there for an hour and watch them. So, <laughs> so if I go into this one, I'll try to keep it into like 20, 25 minutes, and then hopefully I can get through all of them in that time. I'll probably have to do two more videos, okay? That way it's not one big 50-minute one. They're just too long. Um, okay, last one I'm going to do in class. And this one is not too bad now considering we know what's going on. So this is line one, line two, line three, I draw one more, line four. And really that's all the different, oh no, I'll draw all four different situations on my paper. Okay, so here are all the four situations that can happen. Now, all they want to know about is the slope, okay? So they just want us to tell them about the slope. Is this slope, and there's four possibilities, positive, negative, zero, like a flat running surface, right? And undefined, like Spider-Man, you can't walk on the wall, right? So I'm going to just go out of order. What is this one? A positive, positive. negative, zero, or positive. undefined? Mm -hmm. If you trace it from left to right, it goes up, doesn't it? So this one's positive. This one would be what? Negative. Mm -hmm. You trace it, it goes downward. This one is a flat surface. So what is the incline of a flat zero. surface? Zero. And then this one's like a wall standing up, Those right? Correct. You cannot walk on those walls. You can walk on a negative incline, right? That just makes you go faster. <laughs> you can even walk on a positive incline. It just might be harder, right? And then this one's neutral. This is the one you cannot walk on, so it should be undefined. Okay? Okay, I'm going to stop there.